Hello, my name is Genevieve Brown, and today I will be talking about recognizing and then striking down stigma. How many of you became immediately nervous once I started signing? How many of you felt uncomfortable? What are some assumptions you initially made about me? You might have thought that I was deaf. You may have been nervous because you didn't understand what I was saying or doing. Maybe you even thought that I shouldn't be up here giving a TEDx talk. When we meet someone with an attribute that makes the individual different, our brains don't know what to do. So we try to place that person into their own category. This allows us to reduce them in our minds from a normal person to a weak or discounted one. This is all because a person doesn't fit the norms of our society. The action of discrediting a person is called stigma. According to Webster's Dictionary, stigma is a mark of disgrace associated with a particular circumstance, quality, or person. Sociologist Dr. Irving Goffman says that there are three types of stigma. The physical. For example, when I started this talk by signing, any and all of the negative assumptions that you might have instantaneously made about me belong to this part of stigma. The blemishes on one's character. This is not about character traits. Instead, it focuses on mental illness, addiction, chronic illness, strict religious beliefs, and even political identity. Then there is tribal stigma. The use of the word tribal here is referencing what group you belong to, race, gender, and nationality, Play. You might be wondering, how does stigma show up on a day-to-day -day basis? My mother, as some of you may know, is blind. Since around the age of five, I started to notice the ways that strangers would interact with my mom, and not until high school did I realize that this is because of stereotypes and biases which lead people to have stigma about blind people. For some, they'd be hesitant to come within the radius of her cane, and acted like aiding her in a new environment by taking her arm would bring them folly. They'd shout at my mother as if she had hearing loss, or they would direct their questions to me, as if my mother, who holds a master's degree, wasn't intelligent and therefore couldn't speak for herself. When other children would ask me why my mom had a stick, I would tell them that my mother was blind and explain what a cane was. They would almost always follow up with, this, with the statement, I thought blind people wore sunglasses all the time. These are all examples of physical stigma. While working with deaf individuals, I witnessed and or was told similar discrediting circumstances. These negative circumstances are not just limited to those with physical disabilities, but also applies to those who fit into the other two categories of stigma. It is my goal by the end of this presentation that we will learn some ways to amend our mistakes and redirect our ways of thinking so that we humanize every individual and bring an end to stigma. The hot button topic of today is related to COVID-19, whether that be vaccine mandates, mask requirements, or social distancing constraints, these all fall under the second category of stigma the blemishes on one's character. For some people might say that if you choose not to vaccinate, then you are a conservative, Trump-loving idiot. If you choose to spend time with loved ones, even if you are vaccinated, then you are reckless and irresponsible. If you wear a mask, you're a paranoid germaphobe. These are some of the situations that have stemmed from the pandemic, and I would argue that they are nothing more than stereotypes. People make these kinds of choices because of medical conditions, strict religious beliefs which come from many different religions, or because their mental health is suffering from having been scared and isolated for so long. What we think about when we meet someone with a disability or has a certain medical condition or belongs to even a particular political party is a result of stereotyping. While stereotyping affects all the stigma categories, there are many that are prevalent to the third group, specifically targeting race, gender, religion, nationality, sexuality, and family systems. Ironically, even though each one of us can find at least one subset within this third stigma category that we can most affiliate with, this group still faces some of the most prevalent stereotypes. Sociologist William Helmrich defines stereotypes as an exaggerated belief, an oversimplification, or uncritical judgment about a category. Stereotyping is often an exaggeration or distortion of reality, although it is frequently accepted by people as fact. You might hear someone say that if you oops, <laughs> um, if someone, there are many, there, even though there is a kernel of truth in some stereotypes, this does not mean that it applies to everyone within a specific category, whether it is negative or positive. For example, all deaf people can read lips. Some deaf people might be able to sort of read your lips, but even the best lip reader can only catch approximately 30% of what you're saying. Or, all service dogs are for blind people. 
10,000 out of 500,000 service dog teams are working as guide dogs. That means that 490,000 service dogs are assisting their owners in other ways. These stereotypes come from biases on how one should look, act, or think. Charles Cooley invented the theory of the looking glass self. This is a phenomenon where the individual builds their self-identity off of how one believes that they should look, think, or act. We all have the sense of the looking glass self, the desire to look good, be happy, and fit in. If you hear someone in public talking about a person with a specific disability, a chronic illness, a religion different from your own, or a skin color different than yours, this can be overheard. And this can affect someone negatively, either that individual directly or someone who you were talking about with a similar attribute. Our culture has a tendency to use derogatory colloquialisms in our daily language. For example, when someone can't find something, you might hear another person quit back, what, are you blind? This is all because a person doesn't fit that idea. I will not list any more examples as they can be very hurtful. What you say in jest can be overheard. Or you might be talking to someone who might be directly affected by what you thought was a joke. These types of interactions, or perhaps the lack thereof, are what keeps stigma alive and thriving. To help bring an end to stigma, it is important to remember that each individual is unique and has a personal sense of self. They do not deserve their story to be immediately discounted by your opinions. Everyone deserves to be treated with dignity and respect. If you have questions, you may ask that person politely. If they choose to keep their personal information private, respect that boundary. They do not owe you an explanation of who they are. Continue to keep an open mind. No one deserves a story to be immediately discounted. Every person has a unique and circumstantial story. No two days, experiences, situations, or conditions are the same for anyone. This is especially true if you've met someone with a, in a specific category. It is also important not to make assumptions about everyone within a category, as this is discounting each person's story and perpetuating biases. It is equally important to not assume that just because someone seems to be able-bodied, have a certain skin color, or presents as a certain gender, that they are not part of a group that is affected by stigma. By making this assumption, you're not only guilty of perpetuating a stereotype, but also continuing the stigma cycle. From one's physical differences, to their medical struggles, to their political party, to the color of their skin, there's a daily battle to stand against the torrent of naysayers. Help strike down stigma by being the one to stop a friend from stereotyping someone or stop someone from making a quick and false judgment about another person. Stigma ends with you, with what you say and what you do.